Hello and welcome to video three of part two in my journal describe or not journal but walkthrough of War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. Um, if you just stumbled upon this video randomly, I recommend checking out other videos from me and uh, starting with part one, video one. And um, first off, I'm going to start by building on a few things I left out of uh, previous parts of or previous videos. The first um, has to do with land combat, and I'm going to go back over to this legend of the different terrain types, and uh, it's actually pretty intuitive, one of the few things that are in this game, as to uh, grounds effect, like terrain effect, on uh, combat. Things like forested and rough terrain give a pretty big defensive bonus, so it actually multiplies the assault value of uh, land units. Um, defending in that hex by, you know, I think forest and rough is three or four times multiplier. Heavy urban is also a pretty good multiplier. <clears throat> and things like clear and uh, cultivated, those are low multipliers. You know, they, you just have your standard times one. You don't get any bonus from it. Um, the next thing I want to show off um, that's good to know is a little bit more elaboration on air groups. First off, I need to cancel this guy's uh, target destination. I'm going to select pick destination hex and right click to get rid of that because I want him sitting over this hex providing uh, combat air patrols. So you might notice in here you see a couple air groups and you have a number here and then a number in parentheses, the type of aircraft, and then another number in parentheses. So there's no indication anywhere here what any of these numbers actually mean so you can kinda guess and that's what I did after uh, sort of a long period of experimentation in this game this first number here is the number of active airplanes can uh, you know that are able to fly on this next turn everything's hunky-dory there uh, the second number in parentheses here is the num total number of aircraft you have um, so what you do is take 36 in this case, minus 23, and that indicates you got 13 damaged uh, damaged Hellcats. So, you're, well, they're either being maintained or they're uh, being fixed up from combat damage or something. Probably uh, being fixed up because we had a lot of air combat around the Philippines in that uh, in that turn I showed off earlier. And the, finally, the second number here is uh, in parentheses. I guess third number overall is the maximum number of aircraft in this air group. So we've actually lost uh, four Hellcats here. So to replenish those, you got to go back to a um, a base with at least a size one airfield, or I guess the requirements differ depending on a number of factors that I don't know for sure. But it's got to have 20,000 tons of supply. So uh, I've really built up the Marianas bases. So this uh, Saipan will do, it can send it back to Saipan, and then it'll uh, refill the air groups with uh, new planes. And uh, another thing to mention about, I guess, aircraft in this game is they can uh, be damaged or lost in operational accidents that don't really occur on screen. So you might be wondering, why am I gradually losing aircraft? Why are pilots getting killed and no combat's going on? Well, it's because, you know, they crash land or something. Uh, they might be in bad weather and don't see the end of the airfield, who knows. And to figure that out, you can hit C or uh, click on this, um, or not C, hit O, or click on this icon here for a show operations report. And this shows a whole bunch of things going on during the turn that might not necessarily be shown to you. And uh, it's kind of good to know what... Um, what things are going on behind the scenes. Some of them you can find out for yourself, but this gives a good list. You can see I have a whole bunch of ships being repaired, and um, you know I can't repair them any further because I guess they're either fixed or I don't have a dry dock that can uh, fix some of the major damage that they suffered. And um, can also see different pilots getting credit credited for more kills. You can see uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade Kelly V gets ace status, congrats to him I guess, and also Ensign Merritt. <laughs> um, and a lot of this is stuff in the combat, or the operations report is uh, just rehashes of things you saw during the turn. But you also notice, um, like what I'm kind of circling with my mouse now, is 
aircraft that might have been grounded due to maintenance. You can see this Hellcat was damaged on landing, so um, there are things like that that you need to kind of dig around for. They don't really tell you. And there's some things that, you know, you really need to know for planning purposes. You know, if uh, I'm expecting a fighter group to be at full strength and it's down to like, you know, three quarters of its strength, uh, then, you know, I might be kind of screwed if, uh, if a big attack comes. Anyway, um, let's see, a few other things to mention on a uh, naval task force. There's this row here that says moves M slash C, which is max or cruise speed. Or I guess mission or cruise speed, speed maybe. Max or mission, I don't know. Uh, 9 slash 4. So if you're at mission or maximum speed, you, this task force can move 9 hexes per turn. And if it's a cruise, it can move 4 per turn. So that's, uh, that's another kind of critical thing to keep in mind. Um, now let's talk a little bit more about bases. Um, I'll click on Singapore since this has just about everything that I want to talk about. And uh, actually, if you mouse over it first, you get a little bit of info. You see um, the name, the detection level, which is how much I guess the enemy can see of it. They flew a couple planes over it last turn, so they they have a good idea of uh, of what's up in this hex and what I got here. You can also see its value to both Japan and the Allies. And every base is worth a number of victory points, and uh, so is every ship and every aircraft and every uh, army squad. And uh, that kind of goes into victory conditions. I'll chat about that in just a moment. Uh, you can also see its port capacity with um, the current number on the left and then the maximum easily attainable size on the right. Um, and when I say easily attainable, uh, when you're building up a base, you know, it goes faster when the total size of the base is less than that number and it slows down a lot when it's when you're going for a size above that number and then you have things uh, certain bases have manpower which is like you know people that can build stuff or I don't know exactly what uh, resources which is you know natural resources your metals and things like that uh, heavy and light industry which for the allies it generates supplies and uh, repair shipyard very few bases have a repair shipyard so they're really really important um, and what they do is they can fix up ships and dry dock. And then uh, at the very bottom you can see how much fuel and supplies and things like that are, uh, are being stored at the base. So let's click on the shipyard and um, you can do a couple things here. You can form a new task force based on ships and port. You get a number of different types with uh, rather vague icons, but that's okay. And uh, depending on which type of task force you choose, uh, that determines what kind of ships you can put in. So for surface combat, obviously that'll be um, all your regular surface ships, your battleships, your cruisers, and whatnot. Uh, and it'll sort out all, it'll keep you, uh, keep all the cargo ships out of that list. And by the same token, if you wanted to make a transport task force, it'll show you some, uh, your surface units, your surface combat units for, uh, you know, escort purposes, as well as uh, the cargo ships that you have in port. Uh, you can also show ships under repair, so you'll see what I'm busy fixing up. You can also manage ships under repairs, and uh, bases that have a repair shipyard, you see this shipyard icon here, and that'll fix up any type of damage, assuming it's under, like the number of ships currently in the shipyard aren't over this uh, 50,000 ton limit and as you can see here I'm right up close to it because uh, this battle cruiser the Renown is undergoing a refit and it's pretty hefty ship there so, but in five days I'll have room for some of these other guys that are uh, getting some of their systems damage fixed up and to change repair type you simply uh, you can either click here and that'll say that's how much time it takes to bring it back to readiness or you can click any of these options here. And you can also adjust the repair speed. If you hit high though, uh, the ship, you know, being prioritized higher, uh, actually takes up more space in the shipyard, so I think it's like twice as much, and the shipyard can't handle it, so I usually just leave it on normal. Uh, let's see, what else can I talk about? 
Uh, you can also toggle whether or not ships on that are in the shipyard um, will be getting upgraded or not. It's kind of annoying when uh, you're about to launch a major offensive and half your cargo ships uh, decide, hey, this would be a great time to get upgraded. And they're out of action for a few weeks while they're uh, getting new guns and stuff put in. Um, so that's enough about shipyards. We can also talk about the airfields. And before I talk about airfields, let's go back to the base view. And you can see in this uh, table here, have two numbers, aviation support and aviation support required. Now each plane requires uh, one point of aviation support. These are provided by, you know, supporting land units. They don't do fighting, but you got to have them uh, sitting at a base to, you know, help fix up aircraft and stuff like that. So whenever you launch a major invasion, you want to have some of these uh, support units hanging out too to uh, fix up, you know, any aircraft you decide to bring along to the invasion. And if you have a number, an aircraft support number lower than the required, then um, your planes will get repaired pretty slow. Not all of them will be able to be in action at once. And so it's generally a bad thing. Um, let's see, there's also shipping dock. You can only have so many tons of ships docked at once. Um, docking gives you bonuses like uh, quicker loading and unloading of uh, troops and supplies. You know, if you're and depending on the port size, um, that also affects how much stuff can load and unload at once. Like a size 1 port, that can only handle you know 100 tons of supply a day, where size 9 port, like Singapore here, that can unload, uh, I don't even know, it's like tens of thousands of tons of supply a day. So a big difference there in terms of how long stuff takes. Um, let's see, what else can I talk about? Pardon the dead air while I think a little bit. Actually, I'm going to pause the recording. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I figured out one more thing I want to talk about, and then I'll uh, do a few things off camera before I run this turn and uh, show you some of the consequences of decisions I made here. And that is, uh, the thing I want to talk about here is how can I load and unload troops from a transport. So first off, you have to have either a transport or an amphibious task force. And here we got this transport task force. And it doesn't seem to have any um, personnel transports. This is all cargo. You know, personnel transport is either designated by AP or XAP or APA or something like that. But if you wanted to load troops, first they can't be loading or unloading stuff. So I'll just hit cancel here. You can hit load troops and you select your unit. But there's a little prerequisite for this and that is the unit has to be in strategic move mode if you want to use it, put them on like a regular transport. But if you wanted them in a uh, combat task or an amphibious task force they have to be in combat mode. So that's an important thing. And the second thing when uh, dealing with amphibious assaults is their target. Uh, they ha Units obviously have to plan for a big attack so you hit the set future objective button and then choose the location where you want them to you know start preparing for so let's say we wanted to invade Rota click there and they start planning from zero planning points and there are huge penalties if you try and attack a base and um, like amphibiously and you're not at you know over 80 percent of the way planned you know, you'll lose a bunch of troops when they land and stuff like that, like hundreds or which can be pretty big chunk of your uh, overall force. So, you might be wondering how long does it take to uh, plan? But it actually takes about three months to get from zero to a hundred percent, and that is a long time. Anyway, I'm done here. I'll chat more later.